Amen. Let's give it up for Chris. Amen. He brought some nuggets this evening. Um, I'm just going to hop right into it for the sake of time. Um, I'm going to be sharing as well. Amen. Are we excited this evening? Yeah. That's not very convincing. Are we excited this evening? So if we have our Bibles or we should be having our Bibles, let's, have, let's turn our Bibles to Hebrews chapter 6 verse 19. And once you're there, say amen. Um, just I'm excited for what God's going to do. Amen. Throughout this this month. Amen. I can't wait for Pastor Ray to come. Amen. Uh, next week is already. It feels so so quick. Amen. And also, uh, my birthday is around the corner too. So, no, I'm just kidding. Just want to throw a plug. No, I'm just kidding. I'm going to gang convention. Uh, no. <laughs> Hebrews six uh, nineteen. It says, "We have this hope as an anchor for the soul, firm and secure. It is the inner sanctuary behind the curtain, where our forerunner Jesus has entered on our behalf. He has became." become a high priest forever in the order of or the high priest forever i'm gonna stop right there let's let's bow our heads and let's close our eyes i pray father god that you will have your way pray that you will begin to move like never before today i pray that you will begin to just uh uh, uh begin to give us a mind a, a heart that listens and, and tunes into what you have in store for us this evening in the name of jesus we say amen so if you don't know, our pastor has been giving us and sharing with us devotionals, and uh, I've been following along, and in that devotional that we're reading, it mentioned how can you have unshakable hope when you're adrift in a stormy sea of uncertainty, trial, tragedy, grief, fear, and it made me think about the message spoke on Sunday when our pastor emphasized on the subject, anchors of faith. He described the different anchors that we needed to make sure we had. He named three. He said, first anchor of faith is knowing who you belong to. Second is, is the anchor of faith is knowing who you serving. And number three is God will grant you life for you and the ones that are with you. He shared this because if we know what anchors are made for, then you will know and I will know or we will know that anchors are the very thing that makes the boat remain in place when the waves of sea pushes alongside the boat. I don't like boats too much. I get seasick. But how many of you guys ever been on boats before? Some of you guys been on boats before. You've probably seen on TV where they throw out their anchor. And the whole purpose for that anchor is to make sure the boat remains where it's at, regardless what waves hit alongside the boat. But even in the midst of the waves and storms, stay with me, people know that you can't stay put in a storm forever. I'm going to say that again. People know that you can't stay put in a storm forever. Say, well, there might be times that, you, that the storm will pass you by, but there is also times that you must pass the storm. I'm going to say that one more time. Are you guys paying attention this evening? Because I'm going to share something that's going to be life changing. And what I'm saying is that there are going to be times that your dependence is on the anchor. That there will be times that the storm will pass you by. But there is also times that you must pass the storm. There might be times that the storm will pass you, but there will be times that you must pass the storm. There might be times that the solution of getting through the storm is to remain put, anchored to God's word, and know that the storm will pass you because of the words that he has told you to rest and stay still. But there are going to be moments in your life that he's going to allow you or tell you to get up and go forth because the solution of getting through that storm is navigating through the storm that you're in can I get amen I didn't get a lot of amens can I get amen I know that I'm not speaking to myself this evening but I know that a lot of us go through certain situations in our life and sometimes in those moments yes God requires us to be anchored to his word to stay still and some of those storms are going to pass us by but there is going to be some difficult storms that God's going to tell you that you're going to have to get up and walk through that storm and the, wind, the way that you walk through that storm the way that you navigate through that storm is not through your own ability but it's trying Trusting in God himself. Can I get an amen? There might be times the solution is the anchor. 
Because he tells us, but you know who's the captain of our ship this evening? It is Jesus. Can I get amen? And he is the one that's navigating through our situations. There's going to be moments that you can't see what's happening. That's why the word of God says trust in him. Why? Because there's going to be moments that you can't see through the storm. You can't see through the trial. You can't see through the fear. There's going to be moments that he tells you just to hold on. And there's going to be moments that he tells you to trust in him. And that you need to get up and go forth and believe that I'm going to get you where I've called you to be at. It's to trust in him to navigate through your situations. As much as we think we're the best navigation system of our lives, many fail to realize the best captain of our ship is the only one that's qualified. No one's going to begin to allow me to take over a big fishing boat. No one's going to allow you to go take over a cruise ship and be like, hey, here you go. Just take it. You're good. You're captain. Qualified. No, you don't know what to do with that. Can I get an amen? Though I played on video games, that's not qualifications. You have to understand that it takes a, 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 a captain that understands the waves, that understands the current, that understands the situation, that understands the depth of the sea, that understands what's coming, what's going, how to navigate through those things. But if you go and put somebody that's unqualified, guess what? You're only getting yourself more in trouble. And a lot of times we begin to try to take ownership of the boat and we begin to find ourselves more in trouble. But we have to begin to depend on the one that's only qualified and that is Jesus the one that can navigate through storms that we can't understand he knows the storm that you're going into he knows the storm that you're coming out of he knows what storms that you're going to begin to go into later he's the one that's qualified but a lot of times we begin to try to take the wheel and navigate through our own storms. But that's not how we trust in God. We can't allow God to just trust God in certain times of our lives. But we need to allow God to trust us. We have to allow God to take his place and trust him in every area of our situations. Can I get an amen? Anybody could just, anybody could not cry. I don't, I don't want to say anybody. Because... <laughs> There would be no cars in the parking lot. We could just find a way to crash, some of us. <laughs> You'll be, how'd you hit that? I don't know. <laughs> it just popped out of nowhere. No, you just can't drive. And sometimes we just, we fell ourselves. It's not God. It's that we try to take the, the, take the wheel, and, and we're not qualified for it. We're not qualified to navigate through those things by ourselves. Can I get an Amen. That's why the word of God says trust him. Why? Because he knows what he's doing. And a lot of times we fail to understand that. We fail to understand that the best captain is, the best captain is Jesus. And the best thing that we could do is leave our lives in the captain's hands. See, pa Pastor mentioned about servanthood on Sunday. And uh, I'm going to be kind of going through a little bit just for the sake of time. But hopefully you guys get something. Pastor mentioned about servanthood on Sunday. And he talked about Paul, and Paul used his servant in a few cases, but one of them, he, he, it was found in a letter he writes in, in the Corinthian church, 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 1, it says, So then when men ought to regard us as servants of Christ and those entrusted with the secret things of God, that's found in 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 1. I'm going to say that again. So then men ought to regard us as servants, say servants, of Christ and as those entrusted with the secret things of God. See, the, this word servant is from the Greek word. I've been practicing all day, all day, but I'm probably going to mess it up. Is cupirities. Actually, I think I nailed that. Cupirities. Hey, go check that. <laughs> and the translation is actually means under rower. And we probably heard of probably a, a lot of sermons actually regarding this. Uh, this word, but the word under rower is it, 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 this is what Paul was describing to the Corinthian church that men ought to regard those that are like Paul as under rowers. See, the word it der derives, it means from the military life of a Roman Empire, notably the war, uh, the warships, the war galleys of the Roman uh, uh, Roman Empire, which are. We're told that the ancient world had a low de lower deck, and what they would do is that they would have people. Have you guys ever seen Gladiator? 
Yes, I've seen Galilee, right? You've seen, uh, uh, I've seen him rowing at the bottom of the boat, right? And uh, uh, that's what an under rower is. An uh, under rower is, it, 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 their job is to make sure that they're rowing the boat because the captain up on shore knows where they're going. Can I get an amen? Yeah. And this is what Paul was telling them, that my job is not to understand where God is trying to take me. My job is to make sure that I'm doing my position right. God is the captain. God, Jesus is the captain of my life. And all my responsibility is to make sure that I keep rowing, that I keep understanding where God is trying to take me, and that I keep understanding the heartbeat of God. Can I get an amen? And Tom Vasquez said once that we're not a cruise ship ministry, but we're a battleship ministry. And this is where you get that type of servanthood mentality from because these were warships, and they would have the servants going at the bottom, and they will begin to row and row at the at the heartbeat of the captain because the captain understood that he needed to get to where he needed to get to in order for them to get there they needed the under rowers to begin to be in sync with each other so when the captain said row they will row and when the captain said row they will row and when the captain said stop they will stop why because if they went out there just based off a cell just off the cell then it wouldn't they, then it wouldn't be fast enough for them to turn it, it wouldn't be fast enough for them to navigate so they needed under under rowers that will be obedient to the captain on top of the deck they might not understand what they were going or the battle that they were facing but all they could understand was what the captain was telling them and they knew that in order that in order for them to win in order for them to gain ground in order for them to get victory then they needed to understand the heartbeat of the captain and if the captain said row guess what the under rowers did they rowed and some of us uh, we try to comprehend everything we try to understand everything what we need to do is just be obedient to the word of God we need to be obedient to where God is trying to take us we need to be obedient to our pastor our leadership sometimes we might not understand it but our job and our responsibility is to row to row to row rest when we need to rest why because we're in a battle that we're trying to gain ground for the honor and glory of Jesus Christ we're not a cruise ship where we begin to take advantage of the church, but we're people that are investing in the church, that are willing to lay ourselves down for the honor and glory of Jesus Christ. Do you understand what I'm talking about this evening? I know I'm speaking a lot or shouting a lot, but we need to understand that it's it's much more than me. It's much more than you. It's much more than us. Can I get an amen? There's five aspects of under rowery work, but I'm going to only just say three. An under rower had to row to the captain's beat. I kind of emphasized on that. It wasn't their beat. It's not your beat. It's not mine. It wasn't when you wanted to row. But it was crucial to follow the captain's beat because you and everyone else depended on the accuracy of your obedience. Can I get an amen? And the next one is to the under rowers had to row together. Say together. See, if the under rowers didn't work together, then they would find themselves working harder and going nowhere. I don't know if you've ever seen the Olympics before, but they have the rowing contests. Nobody? <laughs> they got super quiet. But they have the rowing qu- contest, right? And, and their responsibility is to make sure that they're rowing together. And it's not their opponent's fault that they failed. It's actually the people that are in their boat that made them fail. Because their responsibility is to make sure that they're rolling together. And, 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 and in order for them to win the, way, the win, to win the race, then they had to roll together. They had to be in seat with one another. If somebody missed a step, if they, if they, if they rolled a little bit too soon or, or a little bit too late, then, and then it throws everything off. And then they will find themselves losing the race. Did you know that we're a part of a race as well? And our responsibility is not to roll against each other but it's to row with each other and if somebody's rowing a little bit more or rowing a little bit less then it could begin to throw everything offset our job is to make sure that we're praying together that we're worshiping together that we're evangelizing together that we're giving God honor and glory together that we're not coming against one another can I get amen it's not the opponent's fault but it's our fault that we don't gain ground we could point a finger at everybody else in the whole entire world, but it's our job is to make sure we're in sync with everything. 
Because the word of God said, doesn't say that I have many bodies. I have many bodies. You can do whatever you want, but he says we're, we're one body. We're one body. We roll together. We're trying to win a, win a race. Can I get amen? amen? And in order for us to win that race, then we need to make sure that we're rolling together, that we're gaining ground. And, and we're gaining ground on the enemy. We're gaining ground on what God is trying to do within our lives, within our ministry, within our families. Can I get amen? Some of you are rolling for your children. Some of you guys are rolling for your uh, for your mom or your dad or, or, or your siblings that are not saved. Some of you guys are rolling for those individuals. And, and once you hit those check marks, guess what? They're going to opt in. They're going to begin to find themselves underneath the, uh, underneath the same current as you, understand, uh, underneath the same uh, authority as you, which is God. And and they will begin to find themselves rowing with you, not against you. We have to understand that we as under rowers have to row together. Number three is an under rower has to trust in the captain. And I emphasized that earlier. I kind of jumped over a little bit because I got excited. <laughs> an under rower has to trust in the captain. The under rower is, is below deck, but they might not see it. How many of us ever see certain things panning out the way they panned out? If you raise your hand, then that's a lie because a lot of a lot of us don't see certain things panning out the way they do pan out. And when we begin to trust God and we put God's uh, put our our lives in God's hands, He begins to blow our minds in certain seasons in our lives. We're like, we didn't think we will make it, but because we trusted God, we begin to find ourselves seeing more grounds taking place, more blessings happening within our lives. Can I get an Amen. I know that for a fact from my life. I know for a fact from my life, it, it, it's not easy sometimes rowing and being obedient to the authority of God. Sometimes it's not easy understanding the, the, the direction that God is trying to lead me. Sometimes it's not easy. There's, there's times that I struggled in my finances. There's, there's times that I struggled in, 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 my, in my faith in God. There's sometimes that I struggled in, in my trusting in God. And I, I'm like, man, I could do this, I could do that. Uh, uh, if I just sacrifice a little bit of this. But what I've learned, anything that you sacrifice outside of God is never God. If you put anything before God is, and it takes you away from God, then it's never God. Because a lot of us, we justify that, oh, it's a blessing. But did you know that the devil could bless too? I think I said this before, that the devil told Jesus that he'll give you the whole, he, he'll give him the whole world. Everything that you can see, I'll give it to you. The devil could bless too. I'll give you that job that you that you wanted. Just come over here. Just put God on the back burner. Well, I, I could I, I could give you that house that you need, but put put God on the back burner. Don't 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 give no more. Are you with me? And a lot of times those temptations come when you're in the midst of the storm. When you're in the midst of the storm and you can't see, but your responsibility is not to see, but is to hear. Because eventually, once you trust in what you hear, like Pastor Eddie said, then you will begin to see what you need to see. Does that make sense? Don't opt out of the boat because you don't see breakthroughs happening in your life right now. Don't opt out of the boat because there, there's, there's tension or there's a resistance. Because what I've learned, and I preached this before, before a breakthrough, there always has to be tension. And there always has to be resistance. Anything that you break, break, anything that you break first has to experience tension. So in order for you to get a breakthrough, then you have to be tested through your tension. So in order for you to understand what God can do within your life, then you have to endure those storms. So you can understand a breakthrough, a sunshine that you never thought would come. Can I get an amen? You'll begin to understand. And then well, guess what? The next storm that comes, it builds your faith in God. And build your trust in who you're who you're listening to. Can I get an amen? I don't know who's this for. I don't know who's this for. I just know that what we need to do is we need to focus on what we're doing. We need to focus on if we're being obedient to what God is saying. If we want to see anything more of what God has planned in our lives or promised us in our lives, then we need to worry about what we're doing with our relationship with God. Does that make sense? 
We have to understand, and when we're right with God, then everything else falls in place. That's what the word of God says. When you put God first, you put him first, and you allow him to be the, the, the focal point of your life, then everything else will fall in line. But the moment you take that out, everything else will become chaos. But the moment you allow that to be the focal point of your life, everything else must fall in line. Because the word of God says. And if the word of God is alive, then you have to understand that God has, God has much more in our lives, but we have to trust in him. How many of us ever opted out because we don't see it? Let's be honest. A lot of us don't want to say amen. <laughs> You're not faking me. You, you, <laughs> you can tell me all you want that, oh, I trust God, but then go home, go and do it. But your responsibility is just to keep growing, man. Your responsibility is just keep growing. Just keep growing. Just keep growing. Just keep growing. Keep trusting. Keep believing. Understanding that whatever God's trying to take you, he's going to take you. But he's not, at least he hasn't abandoned you yet. He's still there. Can I get an amen? So this evening, as I call the worship team, I don't know who that's for. I don't know why God brought me there. But I know that when I was listening to the message of anchor of faith and also the spirit of faith, also, I, I, it drew my attention that we have to understand and believe in the captain of those boats, of our boat, of our life. Even the captain of our faith, the captain of, of the one that it, it begins to uh, grow us and develop us into those people that, that, that God wants us to be. Can I get an amen? amen? So this evening, as we all stand all over this place, I know that God, I know that God spoke to some people. I know that God was speaking to me when I was listening to this sermon or I was reading and studying for this sermon. One of the things that God also emphasizes, I will just read just the two before we open up this altar. But the last two, I'm not going to go into it. It says, under rower must be committed. An under rower was, was a committed, uh, had to commit, commit their life. And number five is an under rower received no honor. The under rowers sometimes don't get credit for what they're doing. They don't get credit for what they're doing. Sometimes they don't even get noticed for what they're doing. But the one that should get all the credit is Jesus. And I with the biggest, just to be honest. Where we're all caught up in our feelings. 
we allow our relationship to move our faith. We allow our relationship to move our what we're doing in our lives. What, what type of relationship with, with God? Because we feel that, we feel this. We feel, we feel, we feel, we feel. And because we feel, we, we do that and we do this. And, and it's pulling us further away from God. But we can't, he said we can't f- just feel it, but we have to begin to have faith with it. It's all about faith. It's, about all, it's all about trusting God. Knowing that he's, he's the same God of, of yesterday. He's the same God of today. He's the same God of tomorrow and forevermore. That he never changes. Can I get an amen? And if you love him, your actions should show, your actions should show otherwise. If you love him, then you should find yourself in the boat still rowing. You love him, and you should still find yourself growing. You should still find yourself being obedient to, to, to the words of God. You should still find yourself, if God's convicting you of prayer and you haven't prayed for a long time, then guess what? Then what type of love is that? What type of love is that? God has given us instructions, He's telling us, man, in order for you to get this breakthrough. church. I'll roll that paddle. That's good enough. Pastor said this analogy. If you roll one paddle, eventually you find yourself going circles. Some of us, we grab one side of the boat and we just paddle. We find ourselves keep rowing in circles and circles and circles and we never gain ground. We never find new breakthroughs. We never find new blessings. We never experience God more and more. Why? Because we begin to do one thing, but we forget the other thing. That God tells us and instructs us. He's instructing you to get in your word. He's instructing you to get in prayer. He's instructing you to, to worship him. He's instructing you to go and evangelize. He's instructing you to live your life that shows uh, the goodness of God, that shows the love of God. But yet, uh, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna roll that paddle.
God's voice has to be bigger than the storm that you're in. Your love has to triumph over any situation that you're faced. Your love for him has to endure any situation that you're going through. Because true love will stick through it through thick and thin. True love, no matter what you're facing, you will still love the same. If you're going through it, you love the same. If you're not going through it, you love the same. If you're
make God dictate your position. Oh, hallelujah. God's doing something this evening. Hallelujah. I don't want to be known as a generation that's about feelings. about feelings. I, I come against I don't want to I don't want to be considered a feeling type Christian. I don't want my storms to dictate my, my situation. I don't want, want, want my trials to dictate where I'm going to go. The circumstances where I'm going to go. I want to be I want to have the same spirit of the Joshua generation. I want to have the same spirit of the pioneer generation where they just trusted God, where they just believed in God, where they just had their faith in God. And then God continued to show up and God continued to, to begin to move mountains because they looked at it and they declared a victory for it. They went into a city and they believed the city for God and they began to see increase. They began to see revivals. They began to see buying of buildings and buying of homes and buying of women's homes and men's homes. And they're finding a, a, a men and women that are rising up and taking their places. That's the type of generation I want to be a part of. Let's just bring it down. I want to be a part of that type of generation. I want this church to be that type of attitude, that type of response that we're not going to let certain things dictate our, our stance with God. position with God, I wouldn't be here. If I allowed that, I wouldn't be serving the Lord 10 plus years. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God that I've never experienced going back into the world. Because what my father, what my pastor taught me is to just be obedient. Just listen. Just listen. Just listen. I'm giving you what you need. To pray, it, 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 it is to, it's to fast, it, it, it's to trust in God. I can't fight your battles for you, you have to do it yourself. So I thank God that my pastor, my father, never gave me a pat on my back because of built a, 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 a backbone in my relationship with the Lord. It built backbone to trust in the Lord. It built backbone when I was going through something. I could do it and I could fight on my own. I can trust in God on my own and I can begin to lay down some bricks on my own because I knew what they have invested and I was willing to be obedient in what they were telling me. I don't know if you guys are hearing me this evening. I thank God for some people that invested in my life that weren't willing to just pat me on the back but they were willing to give me what I needed to last the long haul. That were willing to give me what I needed to keep going to be obedient to what was given to me. I kept on rowing. And every single time I ever faced a storm, God brought me out. Every single time I ever struggled in my finances, God brought me out. Every time I ever struggled in my relationship, God continued to bring me out, bring us out. God continued to bring God continue doing more. God's continuing to do more in my family, in my, in my relationship, in my children, in, 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 in my family. God continues to do it. I feel like I'm stuck. I, I don't know, man. Gladiator is one of my favorite movies. I remember watching it when I was a kid. Everything was stripped from him. And he had a 
to fight his way all the way back. He had to fight his way all the way back. In the midst of his, in the midst of his trials, in the midst of his, his, his slavery, in the midst of, of the positions he was at, he always elevated higher than the situation he was in. And his last battle, he was wounded.
we'll find ourselves just...